Hi everyone, Chakradeep here, one of the program managers in SharePoint Experiences team. Today, we're gonna learn a lot about building no-code apps using Microsoft Lisp. Microsoft Lisp is simple, smart, and flexible, giving you all the options that you want to quickly create a list of things and then keep everyone in sync and customize it the way you want. It is not only available as an app in Microsoft 365, it is also available as part of Microsoft Teams app. So if you open Microsoft Teams, you will also be able to add and interact with list inside your team. It starts with providing value with native efficiency for you to collect, manage, and distribute content to enable users to configure and, and make the list look like how they want it to be so that it is very easy to organize the thing that your team creates about and cares about and, and must get done. So with that, let's go and look at the demo of configuring the list form with header, footer, and a body, as well as creating and managing rules. When I click on a candidate, you can see that it gives me a much more pleasing view of the form rather than the normal form that I would get in this list. And I have the opportunity to see that I, uh, to, to put a header, which you can see I already have. And I've also put sections in this form to categorize different columns. So it makes me easier to, to tell this information. You just come into this list and see, which is I want to see them the candidate name. I want to see them, there's a headshot and there's a status. And then I can talk about the interview. So I'm like really focused on this section if I really want to get information about the interview. So it helps us to drive how we can configure this in a way that is meaningful to users. So let's see how I did that. So we have a button here that lets you to edit columns, configure layout, and customize the Power Apps. So the configure layout will give you the options to actually configure and put your custom header, footer, and the body with sections. So as soon as I open this interface, you see I have the option to apply formatting. And in the header, you can see I have my JSON code that actually defines this header. Now this JSON code isn't something new. If you're very familiar with how you format a column or a view in a list, that's exactly the code what we use here. As we release this feature, you will see us publishing some sample code for you to get started. When I switch this to body, you can see that now I'm able to define the sections I want and the fields inside each of those sections. Now this is a little bit different to the header because the header allowed you to put anything you want, whereas the body doesn't allow you to put anything you want, but rather create sections and add fields to it. And that's what I've done here. There's a default section here that you can see I have the exact field name that I, the column name I see, which is candidate headshot and status. And then I define another section called details and put in the candidate contact and the candidate details column. And then I have another last section interview and then put all of the interview details in here. So that's how I have configured this body with sections. Now, of course, you can configure your footer as well if you want to put something uh, for the footer which would come below uh, in the form. A nice way to maybe highlight a link that users want to click. Now, one of the things if you notice is that I this had I had specified some of the columns here, like notes, but you don't see notes here. Um, rather, I do have it here in my configuration. So where did the notes column go? Well, this comes to our conditionally show height feature, right? So there's a way for you to now configure a column to be visible based on a condition. So if you go to the same button here, just edit form and then edit columns, you will now get a view of all the columns. And you can see notes is disabled by default. Now, if we go here, I will get the option to edit conditional formula. And you can see here, I have defined that if status column is interview scheduled, or if status column is pending interview, I have set it to false, meaning that do not show the notes field, else, true, which means show the notes field. So this is what is controlling that notes view visibility. So a good way to show is to create a new candidate, and then you can see the notes field 
um, showing and hiding based on the condition we set. So the notes field right now is showing because I haven't selected any option. Now, as soon as I select pending interview, you can see that the note field disappears. Maybe I don't want to have a notes field when there's an interview going on, right? But when I do pending feedback, you can see the notes field comes back because I do want the interviewer to provide uh, feedback on the candidate. So a really easy way to, for you to manage the visibility of a column using these simple Excel-like expressions. Now let's move on to the rule. I want to have the team informed about some of the changes that happened here. So if you go to automate and you get the option for creating a rule and managing rules. If you click create a rule, you will get all of the options that we saw before about the notification, a column changes, a column value changes, a new item is created and an item is deleted. So let's start with the column changes, right? So this gives you the ability to say which column you are interested in to be uh, to keep informed about, right? So this gives you all the available columns in the list. And we can say, well, when the status column changes, I want to send an email. Uh, and you can always type in names, but the really uh, cool thing that rules allows you to do is pick a column that has the people associated with it in your list, right? So maybe when the status changes, you want to update the interviewer, right? The interviewer could be anybody, but when the status changes for a particular candidate, the email will be sent to the interviewer that the status has been changed. Very useful, right? Now, if I want it to be sent to myself, I can do that as well with selecting the me. Or if I want to type in something uh, other than the columns available, I can do that as well. And that's going to go ahead and search my directory and bring in people. Really, very helpful, right? So with all of these options, now I, I get to define the rule and the outcome and also define who gets that in a, in a very productive way with rules. Similar to column changes, we also have the ability to create a rule based on a column value. So this takes it the, to the next level of not only selecting the column you're interested in, but also setting on a specific condition, like when a value of the column is something, right? So in status is or is not, so it's really like intuitive enough for you to like understand what you're doing here. And it gives you all of the values available to you. So when status column is maybe no offer, right? I want to send the email to interviewer. So the interviewer understands that there was someone um, that uh, was not given the offer or you know, not, the offer was not extended to. So this helps you to even further take rules to be very specific about the changes that you want your users to be uh, informed about. And this is also very specific to the, the type of the column, right? So the, the reason you're seeing is and is not the, 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 the uh, operations here is because status is a choice column and allows you to either say status is or is not. But if you think about a date column, then you get more options. So when the date is or is not or is after, uh, is between, which is my favorite. So then you can do like is between and then choose a date and you can say either today or a specific date, right? So today is relative. So it will be always the day that this rule gets checked every day. And then you can select a specific um, date as well, right? So then you get a really uh, specific rule where when the interview date is between this and uh, you know um, October 1st, then you send an email to interviewer. So really great ways to configure these rules and help your team keep informed about the changes that happen. And obviously, once you create these rules, you can go into automate, manage rules, and see the rules that you created. And these rules are available to all users. So the users that come to your list also see the rules available here, and maybe they want to tweak it. Maybe they, they just want to know what is going on that helps them to keep their team informed. They can go here and have a look. If you want to edit this, you click on the rule and you go through the same process how you edit this rule. And one of the good things about this page is it also shows who edited at last and when. So it gives you a really good information about um, who created this rule or edited this rule uh, that was created uh, last time. If you want to delete the rule, you can click delete here and that will delete the rule. 
It was nice meeting you all virtually in this session. I hope to see you soon and until then, goodbye.